Hi and welcome to Robert's DIY Western United States Helper Tour. My goal is to help people on the western half of the United States. If you're in the mountain time zone or the Pacific time zone, contact me to see if I can help you with your DIY needs. Starting off today working on this 95T5R Adam has here in Portland, Oregon. We're going to finish getting this head on hopefully get it started and then I'll be headed up to the Seattle area so so far I noticed there's a little bit of nicks and knacks in the top of this uh, head surface which I'll try to make sure is all smoothed out before we uh, bolt the cam cover down I'm, get, I'm getting the exhaust manifold bolts torqued down I'm gonna finish doing the PCV and then move on to some other stuff. I did notice that the wastegate actuator vacuum line is torn there. That's a major no-no. That could cause overboosting. Overboosting can cause lower end damage to your motor, bending rods and stuff like that. So I'm definitely going to replace that hose before we get this thing fired up. So let me keep rolling. Now at the junkyard yesterday, I picked up one of those bolts there for the inner timing belt cover that's normally a telltale sign that it has been off people leave that off a lot I also picked up the water pipe bolts got those installed tightened down and correct and uh, let me go ahead and finish torquing these exhaust manifold bolts the day before yesterday I noticed that somehow somebody got this dust cap on backwards and locked it in the head so I'm going to try to get that loose. Those bolts were not over tightened for some reason this time. So I'm going to pull that off, pull that uh, retainer off inside there, then remove this and put it on properly. We have a yuck situation here. The cam sensor was laying down in the engine and it's cracked. So there's a chance that this vehicle uh, will not function properly long with that crack. Uh, cam sensor plug when they deteriorate they normally cause issues so we'll have to watch that let me go ahead and route this PCV around here and keep moving I just pretty much emptied the car out looking for my engine assembly grease which I have evidently left somewhere this is my unofficial way of cleaning trash out of the back of the car so I'm going to have to use maybe a little bit of uh, brake grease lube to lube up those cams because I do not want to start that car without uh, some kind of lubrication on those cams thicker than oil. Let me check one more time and start to put that cam cover on. Cleaning up this cam cover, it looked like somebody took some kind of buffing polishing wheel to this thing. Hopefully they didn't make any low spots and mess it up so that it doesn't seal. There was a lot of oil on top of it and hopefully it's not going to be an issue. Got a nice even coat of the anaerobic sealant. I'm going to go ahead and set this cam cover in place. Start the screws and go pick up Diane. Went and picked Diane up. I am back at it getting ready to screw down this cam cover. We have one screw that I know is stripped. It's either here or here. So... Uh, probably switch a bolt or two with those maybe I get a little bit better bite but it is what it is do your best to look down in those oil wells make sure your oil well seals have not got displaced before you start tightening this down I have this head installed and this cam cover on however a lot of these um bolts did not torque down I usually try to get them between 10 and 15 foot-pounds uh, about eight of them or ten of them when I got to about ten they wouldn't get any tighter so that's telling me that those threads are probably pretty much stripped so hopefully this anaerobic sealant will hold this cover together and seal it tight enough so that it doesn't leak this bolt here is extremely loose and not really catching. I don't think I'm going to put something in there to try to give it a little bit of grab. I don't know. I may. Other than that, 
there's probably about uh, nine others that are not torqued down as tight as I like. So we'll see what happens. Now that's how that sensor is supposed to be on. We got the EGR on. We got the PCV tube up through here. I almost locked it under the intake. We have the lower bolts in the intake. We got oil dipstick tube on. We're replacing the spark plugs because the one that was in there looked foul. We uh, have a little crack in the cam sensor plug, but that may be okay. I got the cam sensor on. I'm getting ready to put the rotor cap and plug wires on after he gets done with the plugs. There's the set of Bosch Platinum Plus that came out of them, and they just look fouled, so we're putting the Volvo plugs in there. We're just about ready to start this thing. We got the PCV in and replaced. We got the turbo pressure lines in. We got the air box in. We got the battery in and connected. We have uh, oil in it. We got some distilled water going in it. We do not have the serpentine belt connected because we don't need that to crank the engine and see if it starts. We got the fuel lines connected and uh, everything should be on go to fire this thing up. Now we did have an issue where there may be some kind of fuse or bad ignition. So we're going to pull the collar and see if a replacement ignition switch will solve this thing. The battery connected, we do have a clock. But when we turn the key to run, we have nothing. But it is cranking, so I don't know what's going to happen here. You ready to, for me to fire it up? Up, oh, battery's too weak. Let's get a booster. This is the oil we just drained, which was fresh oil, but it mixed with coolant so fast that it uh, it didn't happen. You know, that's an example of a blown head gasket leak. Okay, we get a booster on it. Let's see if she fires up. We got crank, no start. We got some kind of problem. So we're going to try the ignition switch. We're trying to see if the ignition switch is bad. So I set another ignition switch down there. I'm going to turn it with a screwdriver. I got the key turned on so the car is not locked. And we'll see if we get dash lights and possibly get this thing to start. We still do not have any dash lights, so there's probably some other relay that is out. I came under here and switched these J relays around. This one here smelled like it was burnt. It was in this position. So I flip-flopped those, turned the key, we got dash lights, and she fired right up. All right, Adam's car is up and running. So we're about to take his other ride for a spin to have uh, something to eat. Then we're gonna head a little further north up to the Seattle area. The rest of Adam's herd, he has this Suburban here. Gas guzzler number one. He got a good deal on this cop car here. Gas guzzler number two. And then he has his Swedish performance machine tuned by Art and he bought it with a manual swap. So. It's a 96 uh, 850R. So we're going to take this and go for what we would consider a fun ride, not a joy ride, and get a bite to eat. This is under the hood of Adam's car, ARD tuned with the manual swap. He's got the polished intake manifold, polished cam cover, reverse intercooler piping. He's got the cold air intake. Sounds pretty nice. Looks like he's got maybe a NA throttle body. It's extra large, but uh, man, it's got some power. It breaks those tires loose. He's also got the uh, brake rotors are painted Swedish, and they are, with well, the calipers rather, and they are the 302s. And my wife kind of liked the pedal. For the uh, manual, he's got the metal pedals. Metal pedals, that's kind of got a ring to it. He's got his pod up here. I didn't check what the boost pressure was. I was too busy trying not to run anybody over. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.